So I want to show you here how to create a, um, a turntable animation uh, with uh, 3D Studio Max and uh, I'm going to use a simple teapot. I'm on the top view, I selected the top view over here so that I can see it from the top and with the move tool selected I just want to make sure it's, uh, it's centered, right? So it doesn't have to be exactly on the center but um, the closer the better. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, um, a line, okay, a circle. So um, I'm going to go here on splines and add circle and I'm going to click on the middle and drag and I'm going to make a little circle there to um, uh, surround my, uh, my teapot. Uh, from the perspective, let me go to the perspective viewport, um, control R and kind of click. Uh, from the perspective viewport, uh, you have the option of either put a, a floor plane or, or not. If you decide to put a floor plane, what I suggest is to make a, um, a cylinder, okay? Um, the reason is because um, the cylinder is round, so as you uh, circle through your, you know, make the character spin, uh, the edges are not going to be showing over and over. You know, the, if you make a plane, uh, you know, it's a rectangle, so that there's four four sides on the, on the edges that meet. So that's going to be distracting. So if you do decide to put a floor, put a cylinder instead of a plane. And uh, let's go back to the top view. And, uh, you know, the cylinder is not uh, quite center either. So I'm just going to kind of align, you know, I'm using the handle here. So I'm using my eye for that. And I'm going to create a camera, okay? So go create um, cameras, free camera. Uh, actually, no, let's not make it free, let's make it a target camera. And I'm gonna click and drag. I'm gonna move the target to be kind of in the middle there. Uh, and the reason is that um, I do want it to be pointing at, uh, at the teapot, no matter where we are, okay? Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is pretty much attach this to the, ca the, the camera to the cylinder so that way it is going to use the, the uh, to, uh, to, not to the cylinder but to the, to the circle to make it um, a uh, circle, right? So I'm going to go animation, constraint, path constraint with my camera selector, okay? So then you're gonna notice a wiggly line and then I'm gonna go move over that circle that we created and click on it. What we just did, I'm gonna hit the play button, is to at attach a, the camera on uh, to the circle, okay? So you see that it took whatever times we have on the timeline, so it's very, very slow pace, it's 160 frames. Uh, the beauty of this technique is that you can always, you know, grab that and move it and make it go much faster. So click and drag it, you see how now it goes much faster. So I'm gonna undo, so now you know how to rescale the time. Um, so let's go, um, this is camera one. So let's go take a look at what happened here on camera one. So in the viewport go, top cameras, camera one. If I play, look at what we're seeing. So now we have to pretty much space uh, that a little bit better, frame it on the camera so that it's close enough, but still we can see the character because we're kind of midway there, okay? So let's go to perspective view and kind of zoom out, okay? Control R so that I can rotate. And what I'm gonna do is simply move this guy up, okay? So I'm gonna move that circle up and notice how the camera kind of follows, you know, that that um, that circle as we move it okay so on I'm, I'm going to switch back to camera one okay so camera camera one and with my move tool still selected notice that I still have that circle selected I am going to um, move it so that it's kind of looking down on the scene um, that way we're we're, we have better framing. The problem we're having is that it's still a little bit out of frame. So let's go back to perspective, the perspective camera over there. And I'm going to zoom back, okay? And what I'm going to do is pretty much scale that, um, that, that uh, circle. And notice how the camera goes further back. 
So let's go back and change it to camera one to see what's going on. If we don't touch anything else, you know, you have successfully uh, selected just the cylinder, I mean, ju just the uh, circle. So as we scale up and down, you're gonna notice that the camera moves uh, further closer or further away. So frame it in a, in, a mo in a place that you can see all your character and let's just click. And then yet yeah, you see that you have your character, you know, your subject now spinning there. And then the next thing that you want to do is uh, pretty much make your render. So on the rendering set, uh, let's go rendering, um, not render, let's, let's change the render settings. Rendering, render setup. Let's go over there. Let me put the window within the, our, our view. So let's go and uh, the active segment is 1 to 160, so that's good. We're going to cover everything. And uh, area to render view, uh, that's okay. The size, that's okay. Um, let's render, make sure you render from camera one, which is the one that we have over here, so that you can see everything as, as it should be. Since you haven't add, added yet any um, any lighting so it doesn't matter you can use the default uh, render output let's just go ahead go files sorry about that let's go inside inside the frame where I'm saving the file and save it as an AVI and I'm just gonna put it on the desktop for now uh, turn table 3d max and hit save and say okay and that's it that's all the things that we need to change and render okay and notice how now we have our render uh, going there if the uh, the character goes in shadows you might want to position better you know you see how there's a lot of room on the bottom so you might want to just move that circle up or down or scale it until you have nice framing okay notice how also um, this goes in darkness, so if that happens to your project, just make sure you add some lights on the on the scene so that uh, your character doesn't go entirely on darkness, okay? I'm gonna pause for a moment and open the file that we just created so that you can see it. So here's the turntable we just created. Um, you see it's just the file that we just rendered and it's created as an AVI file. So from here, you just upload that to the classroom, okay? So I hope this helps, and uh, I look forward to seeing your turntables.